The following exercises form a framework that I use to teach ground stroke technique to beginner players. These progressions may also be used when working on the technique of advanced players as well. Prior to using the ground stroke ladder, the parent should familiarize themselves with the technical range of correctness for the shot in question. At any point, if the player is off model in the same way for three plus shots in a row, stop the exercise and attempt to make a correction. If the player continues to swing off model, move back to the previous exercise, regressing until the player is able to perform the technique correctly. Remember to always allow the player time to make their own adjustments before closing or regressing the situation. Please also keep in mind that making technical corrections can be frustrating for players. Be patient and do not overload them with technical details. Place them in a position that you want to see, demonstrate visually, and use the provided cues to coach the movement. If possible, use external cues, cues not referencing parts of the body, rather than internal ones. For example, bend your knees is not an effective cue. When a player is first learning tennis, or first learning correct technique, this section may take up the majority of practice time as players may struggle to maintain correctness as they progress through the exercises. As players progress, parents or coaches may start further up the ladder by skipping earlier exercises. For beginner players, I recommend using the following progression at the start of each practice on both the forehand and backhand sides, performing several reps of each exercise before moving to the next. The stage one ground stroke ladder has three components, movement, stroke technique, and the combination of both. This exercise introduces the most basic form of the split step and its timing. The split step has two purposes. The first is to stiffen the ankles to better transfer force into the ground. The second is to ensure that the player is in a position of balance from which to move to the ball. Research has shown that top players begin their split with the start of their opponent's forward swing so that they can be at the top of their jump at contact. This allows the player to see which direction the ball will be hit and on the way down, prepare their lower body to move in that direction. In this exercise, the player begins in the ready position while the coach stands a short distance away, shadow swinging their racket. The player begins their split step timed with the coach's forward swing. Next, after split stepping, the player lifts their heels and pivots on the balls of their feet to face towards the hitting side. Next, the coach or partner rolls a ball toward the baseline at varying distances from the player. As they do so, the player must move to stop the ball with the inside of their back foot, landing in the load position. The player again times their split step with the forward swing of the roll, beginning the jump as their partner's arm moves forward. This exercise teaches the player to move with balance and to load with their back foot behind the incoming ball. Using a step-down contact move, the player steps into the court and throws the big ball to their partner. Combining the previous exercises, the player moves to and catches the ball with their back foot behind. They then step in and throw the ball back to their partner using the step-down contact move. After throwing, they bring their back foot around to a position opposite the direction in which they intend to move. They push off and shuffle back to the ready position. The player now shadows a swing, stopping at the contact point. This allows them to see whether their contact point is appropriate for the intended shot. The player alternates between slow motion and normal speed swings. During this exercise, I will often hold a ball at the ideal contact point to serve as a tee for the player to hit. Next, the player shadows a full swing, alternating between slow motion and normal speeds. Now, the coach or parent stands next to the player on the hitting side, dropping the ball slightly in front of them. The ball should move straight up and down and bounce to the player's strike zone between their knees and chest. Next, the coach or parent stands on the player's hitting side several feet away from them. This can be horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. They toss the ball straight up so that it bounces to a maximum height slightly above the player's strike zone. 
the player moves to the ball with balance and hits to the target zone. If the player struggles with this exercise, the, part, the parent can first hold out the ball as a tee for the player to move to, or wait to drop the ball until the player has moved to the desired position. The coach or parent now stands several feet away and directly in front of the player. They toss the ball forward for the player to hit. As always, the player should time their split step with the swing of the partner's arm. Now the player begins at the baseline with the feeder at the service line. The feeder racket feeds the ball over the net to the player who hits it to the target zone. When racket feeding, I prefer to drop and then hit the ball so as to give the player time to split step. Now the coach moves back to the baseline and feeds the ball to the player who hits it to the target zone. The players now rally from the baseline with the coach bumping the ball up to themselves before sending it over to the partner. This gives the player time to react and move back to the ready position between shots. Both the player and feeder begin on the opposite baselines. The feeder racket feeds the ball to the player who hits it to the target zone. The feeder then rallies the ball back to the player continuing to do so until the player makes an error. After the player has demonstrated competency with the previous exercise and assuming the partner has tennis experience, they may now begin to challenge the player with tougher feeds. 